Welcome to our presentation on the prehistoric agents. So this presentation will focus on the alpha-2 agonist. There are three main groups of tranquilizers and sedatives that can be used as a prehistoric agent. So we have the phenothiazines, the benzodiazepines, and the alpha-2 adrenergic agonist. The alpha-2 adrenergic agonist can also be called as alpha-2 agonist. They are considered to be non-controlled substances or agents and they can cause sedation, analgesia, and muscle relaxation. They can be used in large animals and small animals via IM or IV, and we can administer alpha-2 agonists prior to minor procedures, and we can use exclusively an alpha-2 agonist for sedation, or we can mix that with an opioid. Their effects are reversible because they have the reversal agents, and these are called as the alpha-2 antagonists. So basically, the alpha-2 adrenergic agonists are used a lot in veterinary medicine. Are the alpha-2 adrenergic agonists that are used in veterinary medicine? So we have here xylazine, so it is involved, meaning that it is commonly used. The brand name of that is Rumpun and Anacet. So xylazine is mainly used in large animals, and um, the xylazine is our alpha-2, especially in cattle. This is used most of the time for small, minor, and shorter surgical procedures. So for example, if we actually knock down a cow, a lot of times we give xylazine, particularly in the tail vein, and help them to get down in the ground, tie them up, and do the surgery. We also have detomidine. The brand name of that is Dor Dormosidan, and it is primarily used in large animals, but less commonly. We also have bromopidine. It is not as uh, common, potentially used in larger animals. The other commonly used uh, drug, alpha-2 agonist, is the dexmedetomidine. Its um, brand name is dexdomitor. It is the one that we use most often in small animals, dogs and cats. Two agonists from the name itself, now they stimulate the alpha-2 receptors of the sympathetic nervous system. This decreases the release of norepinephrine and therefore decreases the fight or flight response. So they don't have the fight or flight response, so this drug will calm down the animal. It causes sedation, analgesia, bradycardia, hypotension, and hypothermia. So the great ones that you are going to find above are bradycardia and hypotension. This one most of the time can scare the clinician. Uh, these drugs are metabolized in the liver, and the most common route for excretion is the urine. These drugs can also cause rapid sedation that does not last long, so it only lasts for about 1 to 2 hours. For the analgesic effect, it can last for about half an hour. For the MOA of our alpha-2 agonists, we have here the axon in the target cell, and in the axon we have there our um, vesicles that contain the norepinephrine. So, uh, in the axon, we also have the alpha-2 receptor. What alpha-2 agonists will do, particularly our xylosine in this diagram, it will bind to the alpha-2 receptor so that it will reduce the release of norepinephrine in the synapse. What are the effects of the alpha-2 agonists with the different body systems? So, there is a dose-dependent sedation in the CNS meaning that when we are going to increase the dose of the drug, there is also a greater sedative effect. But there is a dosage range that we can use. Uh, there is also a time-dependent uh, sedative effect, meaning that if we gave more of the drug, it can also the sedative effect would also last longer. In terms of the analgesic effect, so the analgesic effect is short-acting, and um, again, this the alpha-2 agonist is one of the few drugs that can cause uh, provide analgesia or pain control. And in terms of the duration, again, it is short acting. It is about a uh, half an hour, so it doesn't last very long. So anything that's going to be painful, that's going to last for more than half an hour, we can give additional analgesic agents such as opioids. In terms of the cardiovascular system, so on the early phase of the administration, there is a dose-dependent vasoconstriction and hypertension. When we are going to compare that <clears throat> with uh, atropine, so for the atropine, the reverse is true. Now, because in atropine, uh, 
at the early phase there is a temporary bradycardia, then the heart rate will go up. But in the case of the alpha-2 agonist, what happens is there is a vasoconstriction early on. And of course, when there is a vasoconstriction, there would also be hypertension. Um, later on, we also get bradycardia, and when there is bradycardia, there is a decrease in the cardiac output at the later phase, and hypotension, and further bradycardia. So one of the drugs that can be administered at this phase is anticholinergic because it is the one that will prevent uh, the development of bradycardia. For the respiratory system, so there is uh, dose-dependent depression of the respiratory system, so that is also true with other anesthetic drugs. For the other effects, it can cause, uh, it also has a muscle relaxation property, and it also has, um, it will also increase the effect of other anesthetic agents. So uh, this uh, relates to the multimodal drug therapy for the balanced anesthesia. When, uh, and of course, that means that we decrease the side effects and the adverse reactions of uh, these drugs you know, when we are going to give them uh, together in smaller doses. There is also vomiting. So vomiting is considered to be an immediate response, particularly in dogs and cats. So sometimes to give it a dose of, for example, Dormitor, uh, the animal vomits explosively or sometimes. And we also have the hyperglycemia, so this is transient. There is hypothermia. Of course, all the almost all the anesthetics will cause hypothermia. The adverse effects of the alpha-2 agonist. So in a CNS, there is a change in the behavior. So it varies with the species, but sometimes you cannot notice this because the animal is sedated. For the cardiovascular system, there is bradycardia. Again, that is the effect, long-term effect. We also have the hypotension and decreased cardiac output. And for the respiratory system, again, there is respiratory depression, which is normal for most anesthetics. And it could be more severe if given with other drugs. So agonists can also cause increased urination. In the GIT, it can cause uh, dogs, cattle, and horses have been reported to bloat, and this is although this is not common for cattle that can get uh, salivation and regurgitation. This is also not common. Uh, we also have in cattle, particularly in pregnant animals, if you have a cow that is due, uh, for example, last trimester, and you give uh, the cattle with uh, alpha 2 agonists, you might induce it for premature labor or parturition. For horses, they can sweat you know, as, an, as an adverse effect and it is absorbed through the skin abrasions and mucous membranes. So if it gets into the skin, so you can wash it off immediately, you know, particularly when uh, for humans administering the drug. Medicine can cause uh, depression in the GI activity. You know, it can cause bloat in ruminants and GI stasis in dogs. There, there is also temporary behavior change, reduction in insulin secretion, and it can cause hyperglycemia. So this is why, you know, the, the reason why it is contraindicated in diabetic patients. It can also cause an uh, increase in the intrauterine pressure in cattle and may cause uh, abortion in the last trimester of pregnancy. I use this drug, you know, use this alpha-2 agonist always with caution. The patient should be watched closely and make sure that their breathing is up, you know, again, because it causes respiratory depression. It should also be avoided in geriatric or old patients, diabetic, you know, because it can cause hyperglycemia, pregnant because it can cause premature labor induction, pediatric and ill patients. You can also administer anticholinergic drug 10 to 20 minutes prior to its administration in order to prevent its effect, which is bradycardia. So, of course, uh, this anticholinergic drug will raise the heart rate and the blood pressure. So, for uh, xylosine, so xylosine is usually used in larger animals, but we also have preparations for small animals. It is available in 2% solution. For horses, it is available in 10% solution. And you use, we should use one tenth of the horse dose in cattle. 
because cattle are extremely sensitive to the effects of xylacine. So this is used mostly in large animals and if used with another anesthetic, the dose of the other medication can be reduced up to 80%. Here we have Rumpun, no, that is the brand name of our xylacine. So on the label insert of this drug, it says that xylacine is an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist used for sedative analgesic property and uh, approved no, for use in dogs, cats, and horses. It produces a short period of analgesia. It is also used as a pre anesthetic before local or general anesthesia. So because of its enzymatic action, it caps it occasionally used to induce vomiting after ingesting toxins. So this is the label insert of Rompun. Another formulation of Rompun is available at 100 mg per ml injectable solution. And this is a sedative and analgesic in uh, horses and other and cervidae only. This is Anacid. So Anacid is also another brand name of xylacine and uh, this is uh, for use in dogs and cats only. Available as 20 mg per ml concentration. Xylacine can be combined with ketamine in order to uh, produce a state of um, dissociative anesthesia. So ketamine is of course a dissociative anesthetic and when you are going to combine this it, it can induce a smoother induction, induce a state of catalepsy, amnesia, and analgesia. Use alpha-2 agonist is dexmedetomidine. So dexmedetomidine is available as dextomitor brand name. This is most commonly used in dogs and cats and it produces sedation and analgesia. It is more potent and safer than xylacine. For the antagonist or the reversal agent of dexmedetomidine, so we have the atipamisol. Atipamisol is um, an alpha-2 adrenergic antagonist and it is, uh, its brand name is antecedent. It is a pre-anesthetic in low doses and it can be mixed with other drugs also. This is our dex, uh, dexmedetomidine. Again, its brand name is Dexdomitor from Pfizer. On the label insert of Dexdomitor, it says that it is an alpha-2 adrenergic agonist similar to meditomidine, used as a pre-anesthetic in sedation and analgesia in dogs and cats. For its contraindications, it is contraindicated in patients with cardiac disease, liver, and kidney disease. For its adverse effects, it can cause bradycardia, decreased respiration, hypothermia, urination, and vomiting, and again, can be reversed by atipamisone. For meditomidine, so again, its brand name is Domitor. It is approved for dogs and it is usually combined with butorphanol. So butorphanol is um, an opioid and it is to be given IV, preferred, or IM. Allow the drug 20 minutes to take effect and it has a great sedative effect, often combined with a local anesthetic for minor surgical procedures. Of meditomidine, so the brand name of meditomidine is uh, Domitor and that is from Ilang. We also have ditomidine. So ditomidine is closely related to meditomidine. It is used in horses. It causes sedation, analgesia, and muscle relaxation. It has twice the duration of the xylacine and it provides standing sedation with bitorphanol. So bitorphanol is an opioid drug. What's it, what is standing sedation? So when we say that standing sedation, the animal is still able to stand but they are quite sedated. We also have rumifidine, so it provides less ataxia than ditomidine, and they are not uh, as common as that of the other brand, no, the dex, dex meditomidine and xylacine. 